What does HARP stand for again? The Hamilton Association for Residential and Recreational Redevelopment Programs. You know what, I, I'm on the board of directors of this organization, just so, you know, full disclosure here, and I can never remember that because <laughs> it is a mouthful. And I usually tell people that it's a charity, it's an anti-poverty charity that works in some relatively needy neighborhoods in, in our community offering programs. And I think the video showed that, that we uh, are not only eclectic in terms of um, uh, programs for youth, but also programs uh, for older folks in neighborhoods, uh, but also in terms of where we are geographically. Where exactly do we operate? Well, uh, the major uh, center is in uh, the South Sherman Hub on Main Street at uh, Sherman. And it's the former uh, St. Peter's Anglican Church, which we have turned into a community center. Uh, but we also uh, have satellite uh, and schools at the uh, Dr. Davy School on Ferguson Avenue and Memorial uh, School on um, Main Street. Uh, and uh, we've started again in Jamesville at Sir John A. Macdonald in the evenings um, as well where we run programs. And how many uh, individuals participate in the varied programs um, that we offer? Well, last year at uh, St. Peter's alone, we had uh, more than 15,000 people pass through our doors. So there's quite a sizable number. 15,000 people coming through our doors to participate in the program. They've got to pay a lot of money to participate, though. How much do our, our participants pay? Well, that's one of the things about HARP. We don't charge. Every, exactly. Everything is free. Indeed. And so these are folks, obviously, uh, in neighborhoods that are reemerging, uh, that are trying to help themselves. And uh, we don't charge for the programs because it would add to their burden if we were to charge. So where does our funding come from? Well, we have some uh, really solid funders from the Hamilton Community Foundation, the United Way, uh, the Ministry of Tourism and Culture and Sport, um, the Trillium Foundation, and the Rotary Club have all uh, provided for us in the past. Right. And, um, and of course, then we do some fundraising as well. We'll talk about the gala in a, in a few moments. Uh, but what's our budget for this organization uh, on a yearly basis? Around $300,000. So really, $300,000. How many people are on staff? Uh, five. There are five staff members, uh, and in one location alone, 15, dealing with 15,000 in individuals. Mm. Uh, and that's just one of three or four locations. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of volunteer effort here right. as well. How many volunteers come through? About 250. 250 volunteers. Totally. Now let's clarify your role because you started as a volunteer mm. um, and of course uh, Sue Ann Ward, Reverend Ward, whom we've interviewed on this program last year is, was the founding executive director. Mm. Uh, she's gone on to do other things now. She's gone back into the ministry, hasn't mm -hmm. she? Uh, and so when the board was looking for her replacement, you stepped up or at least were you tapped on the... How did that happen? <laughs> Well, I don't think there's anybody else. <laughs> I was, it was by default. <laughs> well, you know what? We, we say that jokingly because I know the story, and so do you. Uh, you were very helpful. You were Sue Ann's right-hand person. Uh, yeah. She had great things to say about you, and you actually helped uh, uh, animate and maintain a whole bunch of programs, so you stepped into, into the breach. It's not a career move that you're making. I mean... Uh, you know, you, you've retired from employment and this is your contribution to the community and there's a, a wee bit of remuneration uh, for the position as well. It should be paid much, much more. How many hours do you put in on an average day? Oh, 10 to 11 or so. It's quite a few, but I always did that whenever I work.